Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Louise Hubar begins now. Good evening everyone. Elderly Kingston residents have spoken out in fear of facing homelessness when their rental subsidy scheme ends next year. They're pleading with the state government to help them find an alternative to avoid ending up on the streets. For 10 years these residents have called Redwood Village home. By next year they could be homeless. I think the only alternative for me is going to be living in my car. You don't sleep. You don't eat, you're just constantly worrying where we're going to be living. Their lease has been partly subsidised through the National Rental Assistance Scheme, but the federal government is phasing it out, leaving tenants across 11 units to pay full rent or be left without a roof over their heads. We can't possibly afford the, the current rental market, so, eh, so what do we do? Labor says up to 300 Tasmanians could be in a similar situation and the state government needs to step in before it's too late. There are options for the state government to look at to make sure that these uh, model tenants are not left uh, high and dry when their leases end next year. We've made some modifications to our private rental incentive scheme to ensure that properties that have previously operated under the NRAS scheme uh, can be considered for eligibility. The state government is encouraging tenants at risk of homelessness to contact Housing Connect, but there's already 4,500 people on the register and the wait time is more than a year. The Federal Department of Social Services says ongoing rental arrangements are a matter for tenants and property owners. For the community of residents enjoying their twilight years together, moving out isn't an option. They're the family I haven't got. Ainsley Kosh, 7, Tasmania News. A 19-year-old man has been charged after an alleged shooting in Longford overnight. Police claim the teenager shot a 30-year-old man in the leg after a dispute reached boiling point on Goose Green Place. The victim suffered minor injuries and was treated by paramedics on the scene. The gun, believed to have been used in the crime, hasn't been found. Even though he's, it's at a it's a targeted attack. I mean, it's, it's very disturbing for police to, and, and the public to have these type of people running around in the community with firearms um, and taking shots at people. The teenager has been remanded in custody to face court tomorrow. Meanwhile, the state government has warned the start date of a container refund scheme may be delayed by years if the bill doesn't pass through Parliament's final sitting week. But if the plan is accepted by the Legislative Council without any major changes, Minister Roger Yench says the scheme could be rolled out before the end of next year. We can go straight into tendering. We can secure contracts with the providers. We can build that scheme and have it, have it operating before next summer's holiday season. The minister also denied claims from Bogues Brewery that it had been gagged on providing feedback to Parliament. Calm weather conditions were welcomed by thousands of brave racers enduring the world's toughest half marathon in Hobart. Many eager to take on the 21 kilometre mountain slog after two years of disruptions. As the sun rose over Hobart, walkers and runners set off from Rest Point Casino, winding up Mount Wellington's painfully steep road, then reaching the top. Nick Earl leaping across the finish line first. Yeah, really well. Um, started off so strong down the bottom and it got to the springs and suddenly had a bad patch. But then I was just like, no, just slow down a bit, pump the arms, save the legs, you know, just work you out this hill. Miriam Dowie taking home a win in the women's in her sixth race. A big relief um, and for me it's just about getting to the finish. Um, so even if I came, you know, dead last, I'm still happy. <laughs> yeah. Around three and a half thousand people pounding the 21.1 kilometre pavement in this year's Point to Pinnacle. A half marathon not for the faint-hearted. About 18 k's in, I just, my legs just stopped working. Um, yeah, good fun though. About two k's to go, I started getting cramps in both legs and it eases off a bit so um, you can just kind of slog it out. It's just relentless, the uphill, like there's just no getting away from it so yeah, it was pretty tough. While family and friends cheer on from the sideline. Yeah, no, we're all excited, everyone's got their signs so yep, 
got the music and the microphone. You're going to cheer for Mum, aren't you? A relief to be back. With icy conditions moving the finish line to Longley in 2019, and COVID-19 cancelling last year's event. It's fantastic. I mean, I think people are really looking for things to do and, and everything's been taken away and opportunity hasn't been there. So to have this event in particular, it is a real community. You want to get to the top. So, uh, yeah, this year we could do it and I'm really happy to win. Some taking part with a political message, others for charity. The Mobart Mobros conquering the race for men's mental health. Uh, we're all about men leaving, leading happier, healthier, longer lives for the Movember cause and... Uh, this is, uh, this is our 17th November season. We're still growing mows and still getting around each other, starting conversations, looking after each other. And While the event, completing the Just Like Jack Crew's gruelling eight-day, 275-kilometre endurance challenge, raising money for new wheelchairs for children like Jack. A long way to go, very physically tiring, but the crew around us, we've got an amazing support group. and. And to get the amazing people behind our little man and our organisation is just blows us away. Ruby Kameen, 7 Tasmania News. A Clarence Alderman will move a motion at tomorrow night's council meeting calling for an increased police presence and real-time CCTV footage in Rosny to combat a spike in antisocial behaviour. Three weeks ago, uh, a 15-year-old boy was, uh, was attacked and unprovoked uh, cowards punched to the head and uh, that poor young man now is uh, suffering not only the physical scars but also the psychological scars as well. Brendan Blumley says the Rosny Bus Mall is a particular hotspot for youth crime. A Sam Whiteman century has pulled Western Australia from the brink of collapse in the Sheffield Shield against Tasmania. Tigers quicks Gabe Bell and Lawrence Neil Smith had the Warriors reeling at four for 47 at Blunston Arena before Whiteman combined with Josh Philippi to drag the innings back on course. He was given two lives in the 90s before bringing up three figures. WA are six for 350 at Stumps. The coaching future of former Glenorchy Magpies head Paul Kennedy has been revealed, signing with the SFL club Brighton. The Robins say he'll bring a wealth of knowledge and a plan for the future. Kennedy was at the helm in Glenorchy for the past three seasons. The Jack Jumpers have blown a 21-point lead to lose to the Adelaide 36ers in a thriller in Alveston. It took only 15 seconds for Will Magne to make his first impression in Tassie colours, his side firing to a commanding lead just before the main break. But the 36ers clawed their way back to lead by two points in a tight final quarter and in the dying stages, the Jack Jumpers had a chance to steal victory. Guarded by Johnson. Up goes the three. It's well short. And the air's been taken out of the Alveston Sports Centre. Tasmania will continue its NBL Blitz campaign against the Perth Wildcats on Wednesday. Good evening. Launceston had the state's top temperature reaching 20 degrees, 19 in Hobart, 17 in Burnie and 18 in Devonport. Lowhead, St Helens and Strawn all reached 17 degrees, 19 on Flinders Island, Friendly Beaches and Grove and King Island had a top of 16 degrees. In Tasmania, there has been mid to low level cloud developing over much of the state except the west coast which was mainly cloud free. On the mainland, an extensive area of cloud covers New South Wales and southern Queensland, while another area of cloud covers much of the western part of Western Australia. Tomorrow, there will be a high pressure system to the east of Tasmania. Variable winds 10 to 15 knots, although westerly 10 to 20 knots about the south and east to northwesterly winds of 10 to 20 knots developing about the north and east in the evening. Swells of 2.5 metres in the west and south, swells of 1 metre elsewhere. Tomorrow, a top of 19, partly cloudy in Hobart, 17 for Dover and a warm 23 and partly cloudy for Ouse. Partly cloudy and 22 for Launceston, 18 for Devonport and 19 in Scottsdale. 18 degrees in Burnie and Strawn and slightly cooler in Stanley, 17 degrees. Partly cloudy in St Helens, Swansea and Ross and 19 for St Helens. The UV very high tomorrow at 9, the sun rising just a little after 5.30 tomorrow morning. 
On Tuesday, fine apart from a possible shower about the northeast, morning fog patches 22 for Hobart. On Wednesday, showers developing about the west, northeast and central areas in the morning, a balmy 26 for Launceston. And on Thursday, showers about the west, far south and northeast, extending to the remaining areas in the late morning and afternoon. Warm again for Launceston at 25. Looking around the country now, tomorrow 26 and mostly cloudy for Adelaide, a shower or two for Sydney and 23, a possible shower or storm for Darwin, 35 degrees. And it's currently 14 and cloudy in Hobart, Launceston 17 and cloudy, Devonport 15 and partly cloudy. And Lou, there's a bit of rain predicted towards the end of the week, but we are seeing some nice spring temperatures. Finally we are. Thanks for that, Lizzie. That's all your news for this Sunday night. Thanks so much for joining us. Kim and the team will be back tomorrow. Have a lovely evening. Good night.